Right, in this video I'll be showing you how to get the Ubuntu Minimal system up and running with Cinnamon Desktop. Now there's some advantages and disadvantages to doing it this way. I'll start with the disadvantages first. Being a minimal system, you might be missing some of the applications and underlying system utilities that you need. For example, wireless network drivers, that could be an issue. Now it connects to the wired network absolutely fine, but I've not tested the wireless. Could work for all I know. There might also be issues with certain printers. I don't think all the printer drivers are on here. But the advantages of doing it this way. Your system will be a very lightweight and very quick to boot up. Now I'm clocking mine in only a few seconds to boot up in VirtualBox. And that is a pretty quick compared to all the likes of Linux Mint, which took about 30 seconds to boot up in VirtualBox, my system. Or was it like nearly 30 seconds? Anyway, it's significantly faster than Linux Mint and also faster than Snow Linux. If you were after simplicity, I would take Snow Linux or Linux Mint, but I don't like Mint so much. Anyway, you'll need either an Ubuntu Minimal or Ubuntu Server System. Ubuntu Minimal will not work on the new UEFI Secure Boot BIOSes. I know firsthand from experience with that that even if you turn the secure boot part off, it still has a lot of trouble and doesn't work properly. So if you got one of these Windows 8 systems with a UEFI secure boot, I would go straight for Ubuntu Server. If you've got an older system, you could try Ubuntu Minimal. But either way, actually with server without a desktop, without anything much installed, is pretty much what you're going to end up with with Ubuntu Minimal. Now I've written a script to automate most of this, but I'll show you a few things to get you going. So I'll be demonstrating this in VirtualBox. If you want to know how to get the Ubuntu server or minimal system installed, I'll show you that at the end of the video, and there's a timing in the description below to jump to that point. I've got the system installed here, so I'm going to log in, download a script from my website. So you type in wget space quidsup.net forward slash sh forward slash cinnamon dot sh. And there's a the script right there. Now I'll type in sudo bash cinnamon.sh and you can press the tab key to auto complete. So, first off, which graphics drivers would you like installed? Now, this is something I've included here just to get your system a bit more up and running. So, if you choose none, it'll default to using the free open source drivers. Now, this will also include Intel drivers since a lot of them are built into the kernel. Unfortunately, I don't have an Intel system to be able to advise with installing any other third-party drivers. Now, you could also choose from the latest NVIDIA or AMD drivers. This is from the Xorg Edges repository. Or you could go with the standard NVIDIA or AMD drivers from the Ubuntu repository. It's really your choice. But because I'm demonstrating this system here in VirtualBox, I shall choose number five. And that's it. You can just pretty much sit back and relax and wait for the system to build. Oh, this is a new one on me and didn't appear there while I was testing this a couple of weeks ago. What should we go for? Leaving it on dev slash SDA, which is where I originally installed it. I don't know what's happened there. I don't know what they've done to Grub. Because I was testing out a Debian-based distro recently that also had exactly the same thing come up. Happily, I'm sat here on Ubuntu 13.04 and there was absolutely no trouble like that. I do find this quite clever how it can build the system up from just loads of packages being installed. You'll be surprised at the capability of Ubuntu Minimal. You really can make it whatever you want and install whatever components you want. Well, I suppose there's some limitations on the, dependent, the dependencies of the Debian packages, but you can always push in the command of no install recommends. I've just seen on the screen here about the Plymouth boot screen. Now I've opted for the Solar theme, which I thought was quite nice. It's one of the standard Debian packages included. There we are, it's finished. So I'll type in sudo reboot. Well, let's see how quick it is to boot up. That's pretty quick. Hmm, rather nice. There you go. Seems to be a few glitches, like some of the applications have two shortcuts. Got the network settings here. Although the shortcut at the bottom of the screen doesn't work. Uh, Let's see, turn the volume up. Right, let's see the volume. Back to the system settings, I can look at the network. And yep, yeah, seems to have got wired 
and proxy settings available. The system monitor. The memory usage is at 256 meg. <laughs> That's pretty good going. That is pretty good. Okay, just a quick bit on how to use the system. To install applications, you have the Synaptic Package Manager. I've not included anything else. It's entirely up to you what you would like on your system. This is just a minimal build to get you going. Uh, search doesn't work for the first few times, but it will work later on. So you can just click on the list and start typing. So you could have the Software Center. A web browser. Let's just say I want Firefox. LibreOffice. No, I'm just going to keep it simple and just go with Firefox. Now, how does it look? Firefox. Sweet. And that's all working. But that's how to get the Ubuntu minimal system going with the Cinnamon desktop. Stay tuned if you want to watch how to install the Ubuntu server or Ubuntu minimal. Thanks for watching. See you later. Burn the Ubuntu Minimal or Ubuntu Server ISO file to a CD or write it to a USB stick using UNET boot in. Pop it in the computer and reboot and you'll be at this point. So I've just gone and selected language and uh, now we're selecting the keyboard layout. Uh, now I don't need it to auto detect for me. So I'm manually selecting the keyboard. So yeah, English, English UK. Now it's trying to set up the network connection. In my experience, it only works on wired connections. It's, I think it's very difficult to get a wireless connection going for the command line installer. So a host name for the system. Test. For my system, I put the .tzd, because that's the domain I'm using. Full name for the new user. Quids, which means the username in lowercase is quids as well. Continue, choose a password. I use the same password for every virtual machine. That way I don't have to remember a unique password. So do we need to encrypt the home folder? That's entirely your choice, I'm not. Based on my physical location, it is calculated my time zone is Europe slash London. Yes, it is correct, but you may need to change it, depending where you are in the world. Right, now the more difficult part of it, partitioning the disks. You can either go for the guided or manual. So if you went to the manual, you'd have to, well, literally set up and partition that hard drive yourself. Let's go back. Oh uh, yeah, I was on partition disks. Guided partitioning. I'm just gonna let it use the entire disk. Keep it simple, but it means it might not be able to dual boot via this method. Right, that's all okay. It's come up with two partitions for me. If you're using UEFI Secure Boot, it will have three partitions. One for the bootloader. But that's all good, so finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Yes, I'm certain that's what I'm after. Right now it's going to download packages, but first off it needs to configure any proxies. Right, I don't have one in use, so I can just press enter. I think the minimal one actually gives you a choice of where you want to download packages from either the main Ubuntu server or your local country's Ubuntu server. For automatic updates, well, no, I'm not that worried, so I'll just select no automatic updates. Now, software to install. All I want is the OpenSSH server. So I just pressed space to highlight one item from the list. I'm right, coming up to the end of the install now. Now it's asking whether to install the Grub bootloader. If this is the only Linux system you have on the hard drive, yes you'll need it. Otherwise you could replace an existing Grub bootloader or go without entirely and use another Grub bootloader if you're having two systems on there. So yes I want to install it, otherwise the system will not boot up. And that's it, installation is complete.